So I just landed back from 10 days on holiday yesterday and today I've been catching up on emails and research projects with all of my colleagues but I've also been catching up with JWST, the James Webb Space Telescope. And I figured it's time for another one of my very quick update videos sat here on my living room floor. So they are still going through all of the calibration of the 17 different observing modes that are available across all four of the science instruments on board that the light that the actual telescope collects can be sent to to be recorded. And that work's been ongoing for a couple of weeks now across all of the instrument science teams. And I know that one of my colleagues here in Oxford actually has data from the Nearspec instrument on JWST on his laptop right now that he is analyzing and looking at, you know, to help the entire science team for Nearspec decide, you know, if there's more calibrations that need doing, if there's any tweaks to the alignment that need doing, is there any unexpected behavior of the instrument that they need to understand better before, you know, science data uh, starts to get taken properly. And before I went on holiday, I was like, can you give me a sneak peek of this data? I tried so hard to try and, you know, get him to tell me anything essentially about what it looked like, whether it, you know, exceeded his expectations when he first saw it, or whether it was really messy data, just anything he could tell me essentially. And I mean, he couldn't, right? Because all the science teams have been really tight lit. You know, they want to keep this a massive secret until the images are released. But I tried, I tried so hard to get that sneak peek. And he said to me that I was, literally the worst person that he could have said anything to about the images given how much chatting I do here on YouTube which is fair enough but damn it I really wanted that sneak peek. Instead I'm gonna have to be a little bit patient for another five weeks or so because the big news that was announced while I was away was that NASA and ESA have confirmed that the first full color images and spectroscopic data from the James Webb Space Telescope will be released on Tuesday the 12th of July. Put it in your calendars now people, honestly I am so excited for this date, especially because it falls right in the middle of the UK's National Astronomy Meeting, which is the UK's biggest astronomy and astrophysics conference where you know me and all of my colleagues will get together to present our latest work, which hasn't happened because of Covid in over three years, so I think the atmosphere there is gonna be absolutely <laughs> incredible. So what can we actually expect on the 12th of July? Well, NASA announced it won't just be one image that's released. It's actually going to be this whole package of images and data that showcase what JWST can do across its four main science themes. So that's the early universe, galaxy evolution, the life cycles of stars, and exoplanets. You can't help but notice that there's also four instruments on board, so it also means we'll probably get something from each instrument tying to these different science themes. So if I was to enter into the realm of educated guesswork here, and these really are from now on my own guesses, I'd probably say, you know, we might expect like an image and a spectra from the Mirror instrument, which detects far infrared light, showcasing how JWST can detect the most distant galaxies ever seen, because the light that's left from them is no longer you know visible in the optical because it's been redshifted far down into the infrared and maybe we'd also get an, a full color image from the near cam instrument of galaxies at sort of intermediate distances that have just been sort of blobbish shapes in all of the images we've seen of them before with other telescopes but now have been beautifully resolved so that we can see their shapes and compare okay well how did they look billions of years ago compared to what a galaxies look like now in, in terms of galaxy evolution evolution. And then you might think, okay, well maybe we might get a spectra from Neospec or Miri again of the atmosphere of an exoplanet, light that has passed from a star and through an exoplanet's atmosphere on its way to us. And maybe some of that light is missing because it's been absorbed by water or carbon dioxide. And when we look at the trace of that light, we can see those missing gaps to know that those molecules are there. As I said, we don't know for definite that's what we're going to get. That was just my best educated guess I could make, putting two and two together of what are the four main science goals of JWST and knowing what the four instruments on board the JWST are capable of. Now, one phrase you might have picked up on there is that I said that we're going to get full color images from JWST. That might have confused you slightly. Because you might be thinking, well, JWST is an infrared telescope. It doesn't detect visible wavelengths that cover the rainbow of light, you know, that we're used to seeing. So how can it take color images 
in the infrared. Well, we have to remember that JWST has been specifically designed to be very big so that it can see the smaller, fainter things that are further away from us. The light from those objects has been traveling longer and therefore further through the universe on its way to us, and so has been redshifted by the expansion of space. So the light from those distant galaxies, although it was emitted at visible wavelengths at the time, has since been redshifted down into the infrared that now JWST can detect, and therefore you can use it like you would a normal optical telescope to make colour images. Now I've covered how we actually make full colour images with telescopes in more detail in a previous video. If you want to check that out, I'll link it in the video description down below. But essentially it works like any normal camera that takes colour images works, in that it detects red, green, and blue light separately, colours them the right colours, and then adds them together to give you an RGB image. So the imaging instruments on board JWST, the likes of NearCam, will have these filters that can be used with them to only let through a specific region or wavelength length of light. So you can say for a distant galaxy that you're observing, you can say, okay, the light that used to be red when it was first emitted, what wavelength is it now that it's been redshifted? I only want to let through those wavelengths. And effectively you're detecting what once was red light. And you can do the same with green light and you can do the same with the blue light add them all together after they're colorized, and essentially you will get an incredibly high resolution, full color image of the distant universe, the likes of which have never been seen before. Think the Hubble Ultra Deep Field, but turned up to 11. So it's a lot to be excited for, and I will try and bring you like live reactions from the National Astronomy Meeting here in the UK, you know, of both myself and my colleagues as it happens, as all of this big package of data is released as well. So make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss that. I also have two big announcements this month that I am really excited to share. I can finally tell you about, so look out for those as well. But for now, you know, I better get back to my own science because this research paper on supermassive black hole spins is not going to write itself. If only I... <laughs>